This is another 32 inch 1440p 144 hertz monitor and this one's from BenQ and this one checks about every box that I could imagine and even then some and there are a couple of caveats but not many. This is also a curved monitor so it's going to be really nice for gaming that with the 144 uh, hertz. The curved monitor in my opinion this is an 1800R rated uh, curved monitor and that's a slight curve it's not too extreme. I like the way this feels for gaming and they've also given us a small a nice really thin bezel on the side so if you wanted to get three of these and have like a wraparound experience the curve monitors in my opinion are really nice for surround gaming so first off let's talk about the refresh rate uh, it's 144 hertz and this supports FreeSync 2 so what's the difference in FreeSync 2 and FreeSync 1 well with FreeSync 1 uh, a lot of the monitors out there would have a, a limited implementation for instance the refresh rate on uh, the monitor would be like 60 or 120 hertz but the FreeSync uh, limit would be like 40 hertz to 100 hertz and it wouldn't really work if you went below 40 or above 100 you know like those weird implementations across the board with FreeSync 2 you have full support throughout the entire frequency range and it even works when you're going like you know super low fps um, it will it will work like that what it does is it taps into adaptive syncs and, and it actually throws the same frame a few times i mean it's still not going to be a very smooth experience if you're playing at a very low frame rate um, however when you're playing at the higher frame rates all the way up to 140 if you're using an amd card you're going to get the full free sync support no lines no you know stuttering no no screen tearing none of that so free sync is really nice if you're using an NVIDIA card, you won't be able to take advantage of the FreeSync or Adaptive Sync technology. So what do you do? I'm going to tell you guys, don't worry about it that much because the, the main thing for me is the 144 hertz. Um, and as long as your game is not really going far beyond 144 hertz, you won't notice much. There's going to be some very mild screen tearing. That's when the, the picture, you know, like the, the top half of the frame renders and spits out and the bottom half of the frame renders and spits out. You really notice that at lower refresh rates because there's more delay in between, you know, the different frames that are being spit out. So you start to see, a, you know, one frame is way off and the other one's, you know, like right on top of the other. With this one at 144 hertz, you'll notice a tiny bit for a millisecond. But for my purposes in most games, it's so minuscule and, and so difficult to notice that it's not that big of a deal. So I use this with an NVIDIA uh, GPU and I game on it. There's screen tearing, but I don't see it really. So some people actually get online and argue that it doesn't exist, but it does. It's just hard to see. So I don't worry about it too much when it comes to the super high refresh rate monitors. Of course, FreeSync is going to be the best experience. So if you've got an AMD card, there you go. And those are, you know, a good price right now. Also, this one is HDR. And it is the absolute minimum implementation of HDR. It's HDR 400. They claim 90% of the DCI-P3, um, I guess, standard. That's the standard they use for a lot of motion pictures and stuff out there. And um, that's cool, but there's not a lot of HDR content at the moment. And it's also... Uh, the HDR 400 standard is the loosest when it comes to brightness and colors and all that sort of thing. So they're able to get it in as an HDR monitor. Uh, some people argue that this being this baseline of an HDR, it's like, is it really an HDR? Well, yeah, it's really an HDR, but it's the base HDR. Um, and until we see a lot of different content come out, uh, it's going to be hard to recommend just for the HDR. But it is a step up as far as color quality goes from a regular monitor. So... There's that argument as well. Also, the contrast ratio on this is 3,000 to 1, um, and it's a VA panel. VA panels have very nice blacks and a lot of gradation in, in, in between all the different black levels. So what you get is a nice, smooth picture that has a very nice dynamic range, um, and that's just going to be for mainly the, the colors, so you can see like a lot of detail in the shadows, areas, and stuff. Uh, and it's it's hard to argue with the picture quality on this. It's it's beautiful. BenQ has a lot of like custom technologies that they build into their monitors, and that's something that can kind of separate them uh, from some of the competition out there. One of those is their uh, their attention to ultra fine detail, and they have a technology specific to their monitor called Brightness Intelligence Plus. And so what that does is it looks at the darker areas of the scene and it can brighten those up a little bit. And that further improves your dynamic range and further improves your contrast to give you some, you know, details or maybe even more details in the shadows. I guess that people could argue that might give you an advantage in some games because the really dark areas where someone might be hiding in the corner, those are going to be a little bit more illuminated. Now, the other thing they do on their monitors is they have some technology 
that they claim will help with eye strain. There's a lot of discussion out there about blue light. There's a lot of discussion out there about blue light and does it hurt your eyes? Does it damage your eyes? Guys, blue light does not actually damage your eyes, but it can be fatiguing and it, uh, what it'll do is it actually takes a reading of the light that's in the room and it can adjust the color temperature and the brightness depending on, are you in a bright room? Is the sun out? Are there a lot of windows? Is it dark? It will adjust that. Um, and that actually can help with eye fatigue. Now, eye fatigue is something that we all suffer from uh, and blue light is not necessarily the cause of it. The, the main thing that blue light does is it can mess with your circadian rhythms. So late at night, I do actually uh, like to have a little bit more orange and a little bit less blue so I can go to bed easier, but it's not going to make you go blind if you stare at a screen late at night that has too much blue. That's that's something that people have been arguing about and I actually had someone who works in eye care uh, message me some scientific paperwork to you know, let me look at it being like, guys, this is just marketing stuff. That's true, but there's also benefits uh, to cutting down blue light late at night. And the other thing is it's good to be aware of eye health in general. When we're sitting in front of our screens, we don't blink as much as we normally blink in just regular life, walking around outside, uh, doing whatever. And that can dry out our eyes and you can actually have your tear ducts clogged and, and dry eyes makes things look blurry and you get a headache. At least that happens to me a lot of times. So just being aware of that is the first step. And then late at night, not messing with your circadian rhythms is also nice. All right, let's talk about the unit itself and uh, my favorite feature of this unit. That is USB-C. So you obviously have plenty of port options. There's audio outputs on here for headphones or running them to speakers or that sort of thing. You've got a couple of HDMI, you've got DisplayPort, and you have USB-C plus a couple of USB. So what's nice about USB-C, and I've got all these cords going here, apologize the mess guys. With USB-C, you can take one cord, plug it in, and that's going to be everything. Now you won't be able to take advantage of the ultra high refresh rate like you can with DisplayPort, but let's say you want to use this with a, uh, a laptop and you're on the go. Well, this USB-C will turn this into a hub. I've got the mouse right now. It's plugged into the monitor. You can plug up a keyboard, whatever else into the monitor. This becomes like a little USB hub. Then the USB-C can plug into your laptop. And if your laptop supports this, a lot of the newer, smaller laptops do um, support this. You plug up the USB-C and then not only will you be able to send the signal over here to the monitor, but it'll also charge and power the laptop. So that's a really cool one cable solution. If you want to still have the USB-C hooked up, you can do that uh, in addition to hooking up your display port. So if you're at home and you just want to use this as a hub uh, and all that, you can plug that in just fine and then use HDMI or display port if you want to take advantage of FreeSync uh, to hook that up. The stand is really minimal. It's got a nice footprint and a design. So um, this will go up and down 60 millimeters, five to 15 degrees. So there's that. If you wanna mount this thing, you're gonna to need to get a Visa wall mount transfer kit. And that's an additional thing you have to buy because right now it's just on this. So if you just want it um, for the stand, then you're good to go. But if you wanna mount this on an arm or on the wall, you have to buy an additional accessory. Um, and I, I don't know why everyone doesn't just include a standard visa mount on the back of their monitors. There's room for it. I know it wouldn't be as, I, I guess, small of a, a small of an attachment here on the back, but who cares? It's the back of the monitor. Just give us a standard visa mount by default. No one needs to buy any extra accessories or we don't want to anyway. I don't know why everybody makes us got to make that money. It's 536 by 712.69 by 223.87. That's millimeters. Weighs 8.1 kilograms. Okay, the HDMI on this is HDMI 2.0, in case anybody out there is wondering. So this monitor I would classify as uh, entertainment and gaming. It works great for both. Uh, if you're doing productivity, you may want to consider a just a flat monitor so all the lines will be straight. But if you're someone who does video editing and likes the curved monitor. It's just fine for that. Uh, color reproduction looks really nice. FreeSync, really nice. 144 hertz is really nice. Uh, I guess the thing that you'll have to think about is, is, is it worth uh, the price that they put on this for all the different features? And that's something that'll separate this from some of the other monitors out there on the market. It is gonna be in a different price category and that's gonna be in the description. So the price may go up and down. Right in the top of the description, you can check the price over on Amazon and, and see what the current price is. Uh, but is having that one cable and your entire desk being just plugged into your laptop when you come home and, and there it is, is that going to be worth it? Is, um, you know, the HDR, is, is the technology that they put into their, their brightness intelligence and that sort of thing, is that all going to be worth it? It's up to you. So let us know what you think in the comments. Um, again, hell of a monitor for gaming. Um, and be sure to grab a t-shirt.
these. And be sure to grab a mouse over at epicpants.com. We'll see you in the comments.